Well, gang, that is a turtle. Hey guys, today is my birthday. Most people probably aren't going to give a shit about that, but on the date that I'm uploading this video, it is my 29th birthday. So, yeah. Hopefully I got at least one or two more of these birthday things left in me. And on that happy note, I'm continuing my reviews on the Gamera series with Gamera Guardian of the Universe. Now, Guardian of the Universe is the ninth film in the Gamera franchise, but acts as a hard reboot to the series, completely set in its own continuity, retconning all the previous Gamera films. Now, this came out in Japan in 1995, which at the time was the 30th anniversary of the original Gamera film, Gamera the Giant Monster. Now, the film was directed by Shusuke Kaneko, who would go on to direct one of my favorite Godzilla movies, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack. Now, the film was written by Kazunori Ito, I'm probably butchering that name, but he also wrote the anime film Ghost in the Shell. And the special effects were directed by Shinji Higuchi, another name that I'm probably butchering, but prior to this he was actually an assistant effects director on 1984's The Return of Godzilla, also known as Godzilla 1985. And he would go on to co-direct Shin Godzilla, as well as the live-action adaptation of Attack on Titan. Now, what the film was produced by Daie along with two other production companies. Daie was the same studio that made all the older Gamera films, but the movie was actually distributed by Toho. So, even though they only distributed the film, for a brief period, Toho did have something to do with Gamera, and yet we still didn't get a Gamera vs. Godzilla for some reason. Now, I have Guardian of the Universe on Blu-ray, and it came on this really cool set from Arrow Video, which contains all the Heisei Gamera films. Called that because they came out when Japan was in its Heisei period. But I also have the film on the Gamera Legacy Collection from Mill Creek. Now, Daie made this movie in response to the Heisei Godzilla series that was just wrapping up at this point, but at the time this came out, Gamera was kind of a joke. Like, the older Gamera films, most of them were made for children, and while some of them were good, a lot of them were really, really bad. It also probably didn't help that in the early 90s, several of the older Gamera films were riffed on the comedy show Mystery Science Theater 3000. So it should almost come as a surprise that Gamera Guardian of the Universe not only turned out to be really, really good, but this went on to be considered one of the greatest kaiju films ever made, even putting some of the Godzilla films to shame. And, in a lot of ways, Shusuke Kaneko did for Gamera what Christopher Nolan would later do for Batman. Now, the plot of Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, is it begins where a floating atoll appears off the coast of Japan, baffling the Japanese government. Meanwhile, these giant carnivorous bird-like creatures start terrorizing Japan. Soon it's revealed that this atoll is actually the back of a giant flying turtle that is now hunting the bird creatures. It turns out that these creatures, which are called Gauss, were created, possibly genetically engineered by a technologically advanced civilization thousands of years ago, possibly the lost civilization of Atlantis, or at least where the old legends of Atlantis came from. The Gauss ended up turning on the Atlanteans, and they're eventually what led to the collapse of this civilization, but the Atlanteans also created Gamera as a way to counter the Gauss. So now, all these thousands of years later, the Gauss have returned, but so has Gamera, and as mankind's fate hangs in the balance, the people of Japan can do nothing but watch in awe and horror as these monsters battle it out. Meanwhile, the movie also follows this teenage girl named Asaki, who comes in possession of this amulet that was found on Gamera's back, and it causes her to become psychically and spiritually linked to Gamera. Gamera's priestess, if you will. Now, in the film, the character of Asagi was played by 
Ayago Fujitami, whose name I'm no doubt butchering. As you could probably tell, pronouncing Japanese names is not really my strong suit. But Asagi is a really interesting character, and I kind of feel like this character was meant to be sort of an analog to the character of Miki Sagusa from the Heisei Godzilla series. Now, I like the character of Miki Sagusa, but I'll be honest... Asagi is a better written character, I think. Now, Ayako Fujitami, again, I'm sure I'm butchering her name, but she's actually Steven Seagal's daughter, which is interesting, and from what I can tell, at least based on her performances in these movies, she's frankly a better actress than her father, too. Akira Onodera plays Asagi's father, who's also a pretty likable character. The other characters in the film are likable, but are a little archetypical, but this is an example of how you can have characters that are somewhat cliched, but are still fun and interesting. Sayoshi Ehara, whose name I'm also probably not saying properly, he plays a patrolman who ends up playing a pretty important role in the story, and he's actually the one who gives Asagi the amulet. Shinobi Abu Nakayama plays the character of Mayumi, who's an ornithologist who first discovers the Gauss, and she's also a pretty likable character. Another character who stood out to me was Inspector Osako, played by Yukijiro Hotaru. I'm probably butchering that actor's name, like most of the actors' names in this video, but I really liked this character because, like, he was definitely sort of a comic relief character, but I also liked him because I almost feel like he was sort of an audience surrogate in a way. Pretty much a lot of the things that he says and how he reacts to things is kind of how anybody in the audience would be reacting if they were in that situation. Like, he's the one character who's really kind of like, fuck this shit. Kojiro Hongo, who was in several of the older Gamera films, has a brief cameo appearance in this movie. And so does Akira Kubo, who was in several Godzilla movies. And the special effects in the movie, I would say, hold up right alongside American films that were coming out around the time. And the suitmation is spectacular, and the fight scenes between Gamera and the Gauss, particularly the main giant Gauss at the end of the film, is fantastic. But yeah, Gamera Guardian of the Universe is a fantastic movie, and it's great how Shusuke Kaneko was able to take this goofy character and create a movie around him that you could actually take seriously. And even though the older Gamera films were intended for children, this is a much more mature, much more adult Gamera film. Now, it's still a little goofy. It's hard for a movie about a giant flying turtle not to have some camp to it, but it's handled very earnestly in the film. Now, even before this movie, during the Shoha era, there were attempts to start the gear of the series more towards adults, like Gamera vs. Barugan, which I do like, but this, I think, was a better result because it feels more natural. Like, this feels like the natural conclusion or continuation of this series. Like, this movie almost feels like when the Gamera franchise finally grew up. I also love the film's combination of science fiction and fantasy, where even though you realize that the Atlanteans were technologically advanced, and it's implied that they genetically engineered the Gauss, and to a certain extent Gamera as well, there's also the implication that they might have used magic as well. Like, perhaps the Atlanteans even combined it science and magic. And also the fact that you have what seems to be a magic amulet that causes the character of Asagi to become psychically linked to Gamera. At the same time, however, any technology that is too advanced for normal humans to understand probably would be looked at as magic. And the movie also has horror elements, too. The Gauss really are freaking scary. Now, much like the original Godzilla from Ishiro Honda, there is some social commentary in the film. Like, the film definitely has some environmental themes to it. Like, you realize that it's pollution and deforestation that kind of allows the Gauss to come back in modern times. 
And that's so relevant today when you consider things like climate change. Also, you never really find out why the Atlanteans created the Gauss, but you almost get the idea that they created them to be used as weapons of war, but then these weapons ended up turning on them, and you could very much apply that to the atomic bomb. So, there's definitely some social commentary in the film, but it still manages to be a really fun action movie. Lastly, I do gotta point out Kawatani's score for the film, which is excellent. Now, Shusuke Kaneko ended up doing two sequels to this, Gamera 2, Attack of Legion, and Gamera 3, Revenge of Iris, and all three of these movies make up what many fans call the Heisei Gamera Trilogy. And many people consider the Heisei Gamera to be the definitive Gamera. Now, there was technically a fourth Heisei Gamera film, Gamera the Brave, but that wasn't really a sequel, that was another reboot of the Gamera franchise, and was an attempt to kickstart the Millennium Gamera series, but it never got off the ground. Now, there was also a comic book series from Dark Horse based on this movie, and I believe a video game as well. Also, this movie seems to have had an influence on 2014's Godzilla. Like, Godzilla's characterization in that movie definitely seems to have been somewhat inspired by Gamera's characterization in these Heisei Gamera films. I also noticed some parallels between the character of Asaki and the character of Matheson Russell from the legendary Godzilla series. But yeah, that was my review on Gamera Guardian of the Universe, and bye.